Hi, this is Greg with Integration Insider, and today we're going to cover some of the details on how to use the Continue If card in Workfront Fusion. This is one of the most commonly used cards that I found use for, and it helps with a number of different things, but really in limiting when flows are actually triggered. You want to limit when a flow is triggered based on maybe what team is assigned to a task in Workfront, uh, if that task actually is new and created by a user in Workfront and not already created by Fusion itself or other situations. So let's switch over to Fusion and we can talk about some of those. So here we are in Fusion and I've pulled up a flow that I have that's triggered when a task is created in Workfront. So you can see new record real time. So as soon as that new record is created, this flow is triggered. And the first thing it checks on is a custom field known as Fusion Created. This is a custom field. Uh, you can always tell which are custom and which are Workfront native because the custom fields will always be preceded by a capital DE colon. So that's a really easy way to know. Looking at the uh, original card here, and you look at Choose Fields, when this loads up, you'll find all of the custom fields start at the bottom and you can see that we have quite a few in our instance. So again, the comparison that we make here is it looks at this field and it will continue if it is empty. If that field is not empty, then it will return this message. I currently do not have this message routing anywhere. You can see at the very bottom of the card, this message can be uh, drug and dropped into uh, something like say maybe a uh, comment creation field uh, or a compose card something like that right now I'm not using that for anything uh, but you do have that option one quick note on this the message will only be returned if the condition is not met so let's look at some of the details on this card before it gets all of this information so if we look at the add card button if we click the calculator and go into branching, we'll see continue if. And the description is stop the flow if the conditions are not met or if a condition is not true. So if we pull this up, it says look at value A, make a comparison to value B. In value A, you're going to want to drag and drop some field from your originating card. Or if you use this card later in the flow, it just has to be from one of the cards that comes before it. So let's say you only want the flow to continue if it was assigned to a particular person. So in Workfront, we would want to reference the assigned to ID. Basically what we're saying is look at this task and look at the assigned to ID, what user is this task assigned to, and then see if it's equal to something else. The number one way that I would use to compare would be to simply pull that user's unique ID. And if you're not worried, or if you're not familiar with the IDs in Workfront, uh, Workfront uses a 32-character unique ID, which I have over here uh, for a different purpose. But every object, say a user, a team, a note, a task, anything in Workfront has a 32-character unique ID. So I'd go into the People menu, find that user's unique ID, and paste it in here. So if I had gone and done that, and I copied and pasted it right here. Basically, it would be saying, look at this task, look at its assigned to ID, the user it's assigned to, and only continue if it equals this person. So if you had maybe a single user that was working in Jira, uh, say maybe a product manager, uh, you could use that person's unique ID. Some of the other comparison tools you have is not equal to, uh, you have some numerical ones, so greater than, greater than, equal to, a multiple of, in and not in. Uh, this is a really good one to look for a value within a list. So, for instance, uh, say if an issue or if a task is assigned to multiple people, you could pull a different field and look at all of the assignees um, and look if that particular assigned to ID is somewhere in that list or not in that list. 
So this is a good one when you'll have multiple values that you want to look at each individual one. Uh, key and doesn't have key, I've not used yet, so I'm not super familiar on that one. And then is empty or is not empty. This is a good one to look at uh, anything with null values. So empty uh, would equate to null. And not empty would mean there's some value in there, any value at all. Uh, just a quick note on null values. Uh, depending on which software you're connecting to, you'll want to get really familiar with when you look at attributes of, say, a task or an issue in Jira, if it returns null values or a value like zero. Uh, it does make a difference. So moving on from this, I'm going to go ahead and clear this out so I don't break my flow. What I use is a team routing. So I use this in combination with a lookup card. So I have the team ID referenced out of that task. And then I create a short table. And this has two different team unique IDs. So we have a web team and then we have a UX team. And basically this says, if the team ID equals this, turn that value into web. If it equals that, turn that value into UX underscore needed. And if it doesn't match either of these, then return this specific message. It will return one of these three items into this bottom value, which I named team routing, rather than the default name for this field. And that makes it really easy for me to keep track of it as I move across the flow. But I drag and drop this team routing here. And so the flow will only continue if the team routing is not equal to this stop message. So I made these two equal each other. So basically only continue if it's assigned to our web team or to our UX needed team. And then one final interesting and useful item uh, that I started out with uh, when first creating the flow is I only wanted the new task flow to continue if that task did not already have a Jira issue ID. I will go to the end of the flow and show you where that's actually created. But this stops a circular reference endless loop. Uh, so basically it looks at the task in Workfront and it says, do you already have a Jira issue ID? If you do, I'm going to stop. But if this value is empty, then I'm going to continue. And let's scroll down and I'll show you how that matters. So basically once all the tests are passed and a bunch of routing happens, only towards the very end does an issue get created in Jira. And a couple of things happen here that not only link the issue with the task, but also stops a continuous loop of creating a new issue that creates a new task that creates a new issue that creates a new task. First and foremost, I send the uh, workfront task ID and I fill it into a custom field in Jira that's called origin ID. So that's synced up. And then whenever you create a new object in Jira, or in this case, a new issue, it gives you an issue ID. I have that routed back up to an update record card and it updates the original task that was created and it fills in some custom data. And one of these is the uh, issue ID and the issue key. So this builds the foundation for how these records now update each other with every other flow, as well as when this uh, new issue is recognized by my new issue in Jira flow, it looks first at the origin ID and it's stopped because that value is not going to be blank. Just some other notes because we're right here. Uh, when you do route things back over to a workfront card, uh, number one, if they are a custom field like these, you can see the DE. So we pass our issue ID, issue key, and then the issue link. These all have to be housed in a custom form. For whatever reason, this is referred to as the category ID. So you have to look up what that form's unique identifier is, that 32 character string of letters and numbers. You have to fill that in. And that's how this brand new task has a custom form added to it. Once that form is added, then you can add data to it. So now, because 
this brand new task has been linked to a new issue in Jira, and each of them have each other's unique identifier, they will not then trigger brand new task to be created in the opposite systems. And now they're locked together, and when one gets updated, it will pass information to the other, and vice versa. And that is about as much as I want to get into on the continue if card for a start. Please take a look at this card, check it out, play with it. Uh, please bring any comments, questions that you have, and put those below. I'll try and get back to you as quickly as I can. And if I find a particularly interesting situation, I will add it to this video and we'll just keep updating that. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.